but a few videos to share with you. I tried documenting a little bit better the making story of Miel, current of session, and doll boss in the studio. I hope you enjoy watching this behind the scenes and a little sneak peek into my doll making process. I started working on Miel way back in the day, where the bees were buzzing all around me, the roses were in full bloom, and the nights spoke of deep hopes and dreams. Now fall has arrived, the air is charged, the wind blows, and Miel is ready to carry on with her life's journey to be of service. But before we get too caught up in hearing more about Miel and her sunny personality, let me bring you back in time to where she started. As I mentioned, the bees were definitely buzzing all around me during my day walks. They were the inspiration behind creating Miel. You see, I had this dream of a doll with golden tresses that would make you think of honey and the warmth you feel on your skin on a sunny day. That was a sentiment behind her creation. On this occasion, I work both on Miel and a little sister of hers, but more on this other child later. I really try my best not to work on too many dolls at once because creating unique clothing for them becomes a Herculean task. I like to create, to the best of my ability, individual outfits for my dolls that speak of their personality and most importantly, of the specific time when they were created. Some dolls look and feel like spring and not just because I use pastels or flowers in their outfits. Looking at them certainly brings you a healthy breath of fresh air. You think of crisp folded linens, wooden brushes, the scent of lemon zest and stains from strawberries. I think Miel speaks of late summer and early autumn, at least to me she does. With these thoughts, with these feelings bursting through my hands, I set to work on Miel. We chose a deep green for her velvety eyes. And as you must know, embroidering doll eyes takes a literal aeon, most nerve-wracking stage of the doll's process. You can make or break the doll with the eyes. They don't have to be a complicated shape in order to portray emotion, but they have to be just right for the personality you're trying to convey. Once Miel was made, the right choice was to use camel weft for her hair. Oh yes, do not be fooled. These long tresses are made with camel fibers, long and perfect for braiding spells. Then it came time to do her clothing. Ah! the sherry on the top. I absolutely adore sewing and knitting, embroidering and conniving outfits for my dolls. In my dream, there were hexagons. I wasn't quite sure what sort of real life design they were going to take, but when I started sketching her outfits, my hands knew. Hexy patches, of course. Using English paper piecing techniques, I was able to fussy cut some adorable patches to decorate her linen overalls with. from the fabric I used for Chiara, a custom doll, to remind me of the deep scent of the Rosa Rugosa growing in my garden that was blooming when I barely started working on Miel.
Being a child of summer, and equally of fall, we chose yellows and ochres together. And a knitted crown, which prompted the nickname of Queen Bee. Her face was miraculously covered in a gazillion freckles, and she was introduced to the world, barefoot and all, but with a crown on her head. Discovering bees prompted an epistemic curiosity on my little doll and we went on an adventure, both in fiber and on paper. I so love making dolls. They take me to read, to research, and to discover. I learn so much from them, and their smiling or solemn faces always bring me joy. From trying and sometimes failing, to knit new designs and lace charts, to using different interfacings and finishing techniques, I even made my own piping to sturdy the edges of her wee pockets. I revisited the design for her shoes from another little doll a long time ago with similar footwear. You can find her on my blog if you search for Renata. Except Except Miel wanted something a little bit more streamlined, and this time we used hardware in the shape of tiny doll buckles. The mornings and evenings were now a little more chilly, so I felt the need to knit her a sweater. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a few stories happening around this time. From knitting the taper sleeves, to blocking, and finally sewing a wooden button. When she chose the yarn for this endeavor, she called the color Honey Butter Toast. And I'm inclined to believe I simply must name something with this beautiful title. I just can't decide what. What do you think? Should I make a shawl or even another sweater with this name? In the end, the time comes to finish my doll and try to find her a home or send her away. This is a bittersweet stage. The elation at seeing all the work of your hands, to feeling accomplished and happy, only to be dampened by the morose thoughts of parting ways. It's a bit of a mourning period of doleful sentiments, but also of joy, immense joy at the thought that another human will play with your doll, that the universe keeps supporting your doll making shenanigans, and that you're still alive healthy and kicking about in the pursuit of dolls. As we say in this house, we are always up to no good. I feel that I managed to imbue Miel with the magical light of this liminal season, the times between Lunasa and Mabun, between August and September, between the heat of summer and the cool air of fall, between a wet early summer meadow and the gothic evening of an autumn day. She brought some growing pains to the forefront, both as an artist and business owner, as well as the joy of seeing my designs and dreams come to life. I am so grateful for the opportunity to give her a place on this beautiful earth, and to whoever takes her home, I will be forever in their debt. Thank you for coming to watch this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. But do tell me, what should I name with this brilliant occurrence of hers? I just can't let that name go away. See you soon.